What up, Sassnicks? It's your old pal, Jim. And I'm here with everyone's favorite producer, Mel Drizzly. Good evening. Now, I realize over the years that, you know, we here at Sasso Studios have been a little tough on Movie Sonic. And honestly, truthfully, it's not even really about Sonic. Just the fact that we need good examples of what it means to be a good hero. Especially with what we got going on today. And from our standard, Movie Sonic just doesn't make the cut. So I know this is a bit cliche, but we need to define what it is to be a hero. The Oxford Dictionary defines a hero, hero as a person who is admired or idealized for courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. I'm sure we can all easily list some heroes that exist in popular culture today. From video games, there are heroes like Sam Saren, Cloud Strife, Master Chief. We got heroes from movies and TV shows like Agent Cooper, Rocky Balboa, The Brave Little Toaster, Jamie Escalante, and Mulan. So whether you're saving China or trying to reach these kids, the idea of someone acting with nobility and integrity is far-reaching and transcendent throughout culture. The stuff speaks to people. Mel, why don't you take the next part? Uh, okay. Well, uh, one hero that we all know and love is Luke Skywalker, not Rey. In fact, when George Lucas, the man behind Star Wars, was creating Luke Skywalker, he enlisted the help of a man by the name of Joseph Campbell, who amongst his many achievements, wrote a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces. This book essentially connects the dots across all facets of humanity in determining what characteristics embody a hero. Basically, this guy looked at all the cultures of the world and noticed that every society came up with the same definition for what makes a hero. Even cultures that had no contact with each other still arrived at the same conclusion. I mean, this is far-reaching stuff. From that book came a rubric for the trials a hero must face, the hero's journey. Think of it like a grocery list. You know, in order to have a hero, you need these things checked off. So anyway, in order to talk more about movie Sonic and regular Sonic, we have to ask, what makes a good hero? Because there are, in fact, bad heroes. Or anti-heroes. Well, let's think of an anti-hero as someone who goes through the hero's journey, but you know, inverted. On the spectrum of the journey, it's someone who refuses to call the hero, but, you know, they're picking up the phone. They may wrestle with the identity of being a hero, and may even make a bunch of mistakes along the way. But eventually, they'll do the right thing. Some examples are Jack Nicholson's character in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, P.A. from Yu Yu Hakusho, even Han Solo from Star Wars. Hey, he's an anti-hero. We even have good old Jimmy Dean from Rebel Without a Cause. I'm sure all of you know the illustrious James Dean from Taylor Swift, most likely. And finally, we have Shadow the Hedgehog. That's right, we're back, baby. Now, we're not saying Movie Sonic is an anti-hero, but when assessing what makes a good hero, we have to take into consideration the morals and lessons that are taught through our stories and what we want to pass down to people. Storytelling is a powerful device. It shapes nations. That's why you need to be careful about both what you're saying and what you're not saying. So now that we know what a hero is, let's talk about movie Sonic and regular Sonic. The Sonic from the different media we grew up with. I think a good place to start off would be at the beginning of the movie, when the scary echidnas find baby movie Sonic. Longclaw heroically scoops the little hedgehog up and whisks him away from danger. However, before they can flee to safety, she is fragged. And must send Sonic off to Earth, or he'll be safe. Earth. Super safe. But before we move on, can we just point out the echidna's impeccable aim? Bravo. So let's get back to brass here. Longclaw's message to Sonic is this. You have a power unlike anything I've ever seen. And that means someone will always want it. The only way to stay safe is to stay hidden. Be afraid of who you are. Everyone wants to take advantage of you. You can't trust anyone. Oh, and you're not safe unless you isolate. What hero's journey has Longclaw been on? Yikes. And then later on, we bear witness to this. And if I'm ever discovered, I'll follow Longclaw's instructions and use my rings to escape to a new planet. A nice, safe little world filled only with mushrooms. If things get bad, it's time to split. So long, Movie Sonic. Now let's take a look at Sonic from the Saturday morning cartoon from the early 90s, who, let's not mince words here, is a warrior and a war hero. There's this episode called Blast from the Past, where in order to stop Robotnik from taking over, Sonic and Sally journey back into the past to stop Robotnik's coup of their kingdom, Mobotropolis. Sonic's mentor in this series is his Uncle Chuck. And in this episode, Sonic, Sally, Sally's father, Tim Curry, and Uncle Chuck are all surrounded by Robotnik's forces. Uncle Chuck has this to say. Sonic, you and Sally must leave now. 
Not without you, Unc. There's no time to argue, Sonic. You must get the kids to not hole. Now I'm gonna scramble the program on these bots. Then you take off. Run like the wind, boy. Hey, bot! Say cheese! <laughs> You've got one mentor telling Sonic not to answer the call, to hide and isolate, versus Uncle Chuck, who says that you need to face your problems head on, and this is how you do it. Uncle Chuck's priorities scale back to the children and those in need. Won't somebody please think of the children? You need to do the right thing. Help the children so we have a future and a chance of taking down Robotnik. Later on, after Kid Sonic witnesses his uncle be roboticized literally in front of him, he asks Sonic this. Is Uncle Chuck gonna be all right? Listen real close now, Sonic. You gotta trust me on this, okay? Okay. Uncle Chuck's gonna be cool. It'll take some time, but he'll be just like he always was. Really? Serious. Cool. Sonic, we have to go. In a sec, Sal. I'm cooking a plan. Think you're fast enough to help me unload some bots? No problem. Let's kick it. Yeah. Sonic reassures him that everything will be okay. Let's focus on the task at hand and get everyone to safety. Let's go. Hero. Basically, if you go down the path that Longclaw sets you out on, you never stop Robotnik, Knothole Village, Mobotropolis, and even the Great Unknown are all lost. Not good. Not cool, Sonic. Longclaw's warning has created a very lonely character. To go back to the hero's journey, Movie Sonic has spent so long in the ordinary world, his life of solitude and isolation, that when he steps into the special world, his new friendship with Tom, he's so under-equipped on how to be a good friend that he just creates so many problems. He has knowledge of Keanu Reeves and baseball, but all that stuff is just skin deep. Stuff you can observe. You can't observe a friendship. You gotta participate in it. None of it really serves him either. It's his loneliness that causes the inciting incident. He causes a blackout, immense catastrophic damage to an under-equipped small town. I mean, look at all these lights. Who's turning them on? Movie Sonic? He's now costing the people of Green Hill valuable tax dollars and resources to support his indulgent fantasies. Villain move. Not cool, Sonic. Now listen, I'm not saying Sonic has never caused any collateral damage during his many adventures. I mean, I'm sure San Francisco Zone has a national holiday to mourn the lives lost that day Sonic escaped from the city. Unlike Sonic, though, Movie Sonic's wanted destruction is motivated by self-pity, and the results are uncontrollable catastrophe. Rolling blackouts ravage Green Hill. And you know, usually with a bigger city, that's a, that's a manageable offense. But based on Tom's conversation with his deputy, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of resources around town. Call Gil, see if they can locate the down line. Then call Zim and see if he can get his generator over to the Super Q so the food stays fresh. Call Zim? I hope little Timmy was able to check out of Green Hospital Hills early. Early on in the film, we're introduced to James Marsden's character, Tom Wachowski. Upon watching the film, Mel and I couldn't help but notice that Tom embodies more of the characteristics of the Sonic we know and love, the hero. He protects his town, he has friends and is well-liked, he looks after his loved ones. Tom is genuine, courageous, and always does the right thing. When people are in need of a hero, they look to Tom. Funny enough, his issue of feeling unfulfilled in a sleepy, cramped town is very similar to our Sonic. Movie Sonic flees from the trouble he's irrevocably caused and infiltrates the private property of Tom's home. Tom, of course, discovers Sonic, but man's whole life is thrown into question and danger. What follows is Tom becoming a fugitive from the US government and a babysitter. I wonder if his rates are good. Around 35 minutes in, Movie Sonic gets his first funny line about how tight Tom's t-shirt is, which gave me and Mel a chuckle. A strange moment in storytelling, this is unrelated by the way, is that Tom questions the mushroom planet Movie Sonic tells him about. Tom has just met a giant blue, fast alien hedgehog with tennis shoes and gloves, who has working knowledge of the social norms and cultural customs of planet Earth. At this point, man, anything is on the table. If he tells you there's a mushroom planet, grab your overalls and get to the nearest pipe. Okay, so right after this bizarre moment at 36 minutes in, Tom no longer becomes Tom. I'm not sure how else to describe it. Okay, pal, out you go. I'm sorry, what? Look, this is the worst possible time for me to get myself into trouble, okay? You asked me to save your life, I saved your life. 
Now please, go find your rings. The character developed up until this point decides to just become someone else. Throughout the film, it's been established that our main man Tom always does the right thing. He's commended for it. Now, not only does the introduction of Movie Sonic in his life give him the very thing he's been missing, but to help him is the right thing to do. Not to help him would be a very un-Tom-like thing to do. You could even say un-Sonic-like. Yeah. He's already punched Robotnik in the face, the deed is done. We don't need another hero's journey in this film. Tom is a supporting character and in this moment refuses the call to adventure. It's an issue with the pacing. The movie can't really decide what it wants to be. It's sort of like if Obi-Wan backed out after hiring Han to aid Luke in his quest. Listen, I've made a huge mistake. The Force is telling me to turn around and shoot. Movie Sonic, in his infinite wisdom, goes and guilt trips Tom into aiding him on his quest. Because you shot me! I know. You shot me! All right, I heard you the first time. You don't have to pile it on, good grief. Like, what even is this? Sonic's friends usually want to help him out. They're always down to save the day. Sonic doesn't need to gaslight them into helping. All right, Tails, gonna need your help with this one. Count me in, Sonic. 38 minutes in, Man, we're just listing the time codes at this point. Movie Sonic then goes from how dire it is for him to escape to I need to see the world's largest rubber band ball. It's egregious. There's a difference between snowboarding down San Francisco zone to escape the government versus running away from your problem, fleeing from Uncle Sam to go visit a tourist trap. And he doesn't do this just once. Movie Sonic is constantly running away from his problems to start new ones. Hence the bar fight. Quick side note, this five minutes of screen time we've come across. So many problems with Movie Sonic's character. Just thought we needed to uh, point that one out. So 39 minutes in, Tom has to go make a phone call to the sheriff's office and he leaves Movie Sonic alone in the car. Mistake number one. From what seems like a different movie, perhaps even the Shadow Realm, a rootin' tootin' daredevil stunt show is suddenly taking place outside of the bar. Now instead of staying inside and doing what his friend asked him to, Sonic schemes a plot to sneak inside of the bar, donning Tom's aviators, his hipster plaid shirt, and a cowboy hat. Just, just genius stuff. Movie Sonic is a huge jerk for doing this. He knows better. He knows what he's doing is wrong. And what's worse is that he's robbing his friend and stealing food from the bar. Which, by the way, is a consistent theme of our hero. He's a thief. He's not taking any of this seriously and is putting Tom's life in danger, again. Tom, being the paragon of righteousness and forgiveness, agrees to help Movie Sonic cross off some items from his bucket list. And honestly, it's a nice moment between the two of them. But more than anything, it speaks to Tom's character. I can't help but feel a deep sorrow for Tom. He's like roped into all this calamity and literally yeah. rolls with the punches. Sonic's vagrant disregard for his friends and his surroundings inevitably causes a bar fight. Ignoring Tom's attempt to defuse the situation, we witness again that scene from X-Men. You know the one I'm talking about. By the way, Sonic would have killed this dude with kinetic energy. And I don't think this working class woman would have survived this with her life intact. Not to mention all the broken bones and internal bleeding after this altercation. So the next big moment of the film is when Movie Sonic and Tom talk about Tom's future. We come to find out that Tom's reason for leaving Green Hills is, eh, it's kind of selfish. It's, it's like extremely selfish, like to the point where he's putting his life in danger just to prove something to himself. In Green Hills, I've always felt, I don't know, more like a babysitter than a real cop, you know? So I want a chance to prove myself under real pressure. I'm gonna move to San Francisco, become a street cop. And I don't know, see if I have what it takes. I wanna see if I can make it while under pressure. That's why I wanna become a street cop. I don't buy it. What Tom's motivation should probably be is, I've done all I can to help Green Hill. So I wanna go help more people in the world. It's still simple, like Tom. He wants to challenge himself and move out of his comfort zone. Good place for growth. It's more symbolic of a good hero like we discussed. Mentors can still improve and go on their own adventures, but it shouldn't come as a detriment to the hero of our story or to the departure of their own integrity or noble nature. Upon hearing Tom's motivation, Sonic has a really disturbing, disturbing reaction. It's pretty much the reason why we needed to stop animating this week and make this video essay. You're leaving Green Hills? Okay. But, 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 but why? Why would you leave Green Hills? This may be hard for you to understand, but Green Hills is a small town. It's a very small town. Uh, it's not small. There are hundreds of people. That's a small town, dude. It's a perfect town and the people need you. The crux of Sonic's argument is that Tom can't leave Green Hill because Green Hill is his home and the people there need him. 
How does that possibly serve what Tom wants for his life? And what does that say about the people of Green Hill? Is it that Tom is only useful to the people of Green Hill if he serves them? Yeah. And if they didn't need him, he could go to be free? What a horrible message. Please, I clean out their gutters. I, I jumpstart their cars in the winter. They could call anybody to do that. Sure, they can call anybody, but they don't. They call you. The only reason you should stay is because you're needed, and if you weren't needed, you wouldn't be wanted around. Again, horrible. Man, and that's not the worst of it. Merely a taste of this buffet that is manipulation a la Movie Sonic. The reason behind Movie Sonic's argument is that he's found a friend in Tom and doesn't want to lose him. In Movie Sonic's mind, Tom has this perfect life, and he, Movie Sonic, has nothing. He can't possibly fathom why someone would want to give that up. You're not making any sense. Would you calm down? You come from a great town with great people, and by my count, zero bad guys trying to kill you. And this is genuine stuff for Movie Sonic's character, but how he chooses to manipulate this situation to his favor, man, it's all wrong. Besides, what could possibly be more important than protecting the people you care about? Instead of thinking about what Tom wants, he berates him and calls him names. You know what? I was wrong about you. You're not the Donut Lord at all. You're more like the Jerk Lord. Have you noticed the harpoon stuck in our dash? As far as Tom is concerned, Movie Sonic has only existed for a day or two. But Tom's plans with his wife and dog, they've been concrete for a minute. Instead of being honest with Tom and doing the right thing, like a hero, hero. Sonic chastises his friend for being open and emotionally honest. I was forced from my home. Your home is perfect and you're leaving it. Why would you do that? I'll take care of this. And if I don't make it, just ditch me. You seem good at that. Not cool, Sonic. So for doing the right thing, Tom is constantly being beaten down in this world. His government has turned on him. He's been getting into bar fights. His sister-in-law, she's trying to split him and his wife up. And now the one thing Tom thought he was doing right has turned on him. Our main man, Tom, can't catch any breaks. Sacrifice, now that's the name of the game. Oh. And Movie Sonic, our hero, is participating in this proverbial <sighs> jumping of Tom. He's using the argument of Tom's staying and the motivation to stay in order to get what Movie Sonic wants. In helping Movie Sonic, he's gonna lose everything, which Movie Sonic simply doesn't see. And it's a consistent thing with him. There's nothing up until this point that shows Movie Sonic has any real concern for Tom, aside from what Tom can do for him. Ask not. Tom. Can do for you. Ask what you can do for your Tom. What Movie Sonic wants isn't necessarily what's best for Tom, and that's not being a good friend. Not cool, Sonic. Movie Sonic's subtext and actions aren't coming from a good place. Fear, manipulation, comfort, and complacency. What horrible traits for a hero. Now that's not the Sonic we know and love. Yeah. Alright, so let's use an example from Sonic Unleashed, because like the Sonic movie, it's sort of a buddy cop film. In this game, Sonic is in a very compromised state. He's infected by this primordial darkness that turns him into a monster at night. His friends don't recognize him, he can't run at light speed anymore, and he's still tasked with saving the world. For all intents and purposes, Sonic is no longer physically the Sonic we know. But at his core, he never loses his integrity. Yeah. There's this moment towards the end of the game where Sonic's new friend Chip finds out that he's the proverbial light to the dark entity that is destroying the world. It's pretty heavy stuff, but Sonic is still there for his friend. Mm -hmm. Even at night when I'm like this, I'm still myself, not like all the other people we've seen. You must have been protecting me this whole time. Mm -mm. I haven't done anything, Sonic. You're the reason you haven't changed at all. You're too strong to lose yourself. I'm the reason? Yeah. You never doubt yourself, no matter what. You never give in to the night or the darkness inside your heart. I think it's because I knew that about you. That's why I wanted you to help me. And then later on, Sonic says, Whoa, what? Where do you think you're off to all by yourself? What? But my memory is back now, and... Well, from here on out, it's my responsibility, so, um... I mean, there's no reason for you to come along, so I should just... Do I need a reason to want to help out a friend? Sonic is a good guy doing the right thing. Funny enough, kind of like Tom. But you could argue that this is a more experienced Sonic and that he's already learned his lessons. Fine, let's take a moment from what many consider Sonic's weakest game, Sonic 06. I can't run that fast. Don't worry, just raise your head and run.
feels great, doesn't it? Yes. I... I've never run so fast before. Nothing starts until you take action. If you have time to worry, then run! What a great message. Even from such a bad Sonic game, we still get the good Sonic stuff. You shot me! So Tom and Sonic have dealt with Eggman a couple of times at this point. Eggman gets smart, sets a sticky bomb on Sonic. In a strange turn of events, after the debacle and the bomb is removed, Movie Sonic doesn't run away. Like, I don't get it. This guy is constantly running away from his problems, and the one time he needs to run away, he chooses to preemptively celebrate. Haha! <laughs> Nailed it! Space! Real quick note here, what sort of flimsy 99 cent store material is he using to make his robots? We've got three Stooges caliber of power taking his badniks down. Now I know what you're all thinking, don't worry, Sonic is rezzed back to life. Tom, Pretzel Lady, and he end up in San Francisco Zone. Now they arrive at the building where Sonic lost his rings, and we come across another issue that's been pretty consistent throughout the film. Sonic could easily run out the side of the building, grab his rings, be off to the Mushroom Kingdom. Instead, he chooses to involve Tom in getting to the security locked rooftop. This is something we've seen a lot. Earlier on, Sonic claims that he needs Tom's help to go west because at the very least, he doesn't know the directions to San Francisco Zone. It could be reasoned that if Sonic zipped up and down the 101, he'd be able to find his destination pretty quickly. However, we all know that Sonic at this point doesn't want to leave Tom. Instead of being honest about his feelings though, he manipulates Tom into dropping everything in his life to help him. So, the point I'm trying to make is that whether consciously or not, Movie Sonic keeps manipulating Tom into helping him on his journey based on a need, an insecurity. I think what would be good for Sonic's character growth here is that at some point he realizes that he doesn't need to manipulate Tom to get Tom's help. Because Tom cares about Sonic. He's here. Not really sure why, but he is. And I think that's what would make the following moment more powerful. Because you see, once on the rooftop, Movie Sonic suddenly starts talking about how he put his friend in danger and that he needs to leave, man, for everyone's safety. I don't want to go, but I can't stay. As long as I'm here, I put everyone in danger. I can't do that. He has this epiphany, and it's completely out of left field. Nothing on this journey so far has really shown that Sonic has learned anything about himself and how he chooses to deal with things. It's kind of messed up all along the way. And that's not a bad thing usually if your character recognizes their mistakes and grows from them. In fact, that's usually how the hero learns to be a hero. So we need an example here. Let's use Star Wars again. An Empire Strikes Back, Luke is training with his mentor Yoda and senses that his friends are in danger and are in need of his help. Yoda warns him that he's not ready to face Darth Vader yet, and that going would mean certain doom. In essence, Luke will be causing more problems than solving. Now up until this point, Luke has basically messed up this whole movie. He gets one-shotted by a snowman, and has to be saved by Ghost Iwan Kenobi, sending him a long distance collect call message with the force. Luke escapes, but is left for dead. Out in the cold, Han Solo stumbles upon Luke and saves his life. At this point, Luke is told to find Yoda on Dagobah in order to train further in the ways of the Force and the Jedi. When he gets there, he argues with Yoda. Obi-Wan is the only reason Yoda agrees to train Luke. Kinda like when your rich dad gets you into private school, cause he donates a building in the name of the school. Luke starts to show some discipline and promise with his training until he's tested with getting his spaceship out of the swamp he landed in. Yoda ends up having to pull his X-Wing out with the Force himself and shows Luke how he fails by not believing in himself and the Force. Luke then has a choice to make after learning these lessons. His friends are in trouble again and Darth Asma has them hostage. It's a trap to get Luke to come to Cloud City. Yoda informs Luke that if he leaves with his training that is incomplete, he most likely will get destroyed. Luke decides not to heed his master's words, yeah. takes off in his X-Wing. Luckily, Yoda has a backup Skywalker just in case this model gets broken. So, Luke faces Vader, loses a hand, gets told some disturbing soap opera family drama, and is left for dead once again, hanging from a beam in a city in the clouds, only to be saved again by calling out on his forced family plan and getting his sister to pick him up and take him to the hospital. At every turn in this movie, Luke makes the wrong choice. Yet by the end of it, he learns his lessons and puts him on the path to becoming a better space wizard and part of the Rebel Alliance. So what I find odd in the Sonic movie is that movie Sonic just starts saying all this stuff and it's completely unwarranted. There needed to be scenes where Tom discusses with movie Sonic 
how to do what's right and how he can't just run away from his problems. He needs to face them head on. He enables Movie Sonic, all movie, to just leave. There's no growth in Movie Sonic's character. Tom needed to tell him how to use his power and not be afraid of it. And because things remain unresolved, Movie Sonic doesn't want to leave. And before long, Eggman finds them. It's just, you know, events just keep happening because the hero doesn't do the right thing. And it isn't entirely Movie Sonic's fault. It keeps happening because his mentors fail to teach him the right lessons. If Longclaw and Tom had taught him those lessons, he would have no trouble leaving. We can use Uncle Chuck as an example. My man Uncle Chuck, no superpowers, much like Tom but still manages to teach Sonic the right lessons, even while under pressure. You could even argue that Uncle Chuck is more courageous than a character with superpowers because he doesn't have those abilities to get him out of danger. And that's saying something, because like most of the Sonic characters are like demigods in terms of like their abilities. I digress. So Sonic gets messed up through his fight with Eggman, and everyone ends up back at Green Hill. Something to note here is that Movie Sonic does not take advantage of the landscape around him during this fight. Like how, say, uh, I don't know, Sonic from Sonic CD would. Movie Sonic is kind of like tumbling through the fight, whereas, you know, Sonic from Sonic CD, he has more yeah. mastery over his abilities. The whole thing is just undercooked. All movie, Robotnik has been growing and developing into someone who is a formidable challenge for Sonic. Sorry, Movie Sonic, and has even managed to harness Movie Sonic's power. Some would say he's able to use it better than Movie Sonic. Movie Sonic, who is now DOA, witnesses Tom taking up the role of the hero once more to take down the evil Jim Carrey. As soon as Tom calls Sonic his friend, Sonic's eyes shoot open, and finally, man, Finally, he's ready to take down Eggman. But let's just think about this for a moment. Tom has been a phenomenal friend to Sonic all movie. And it's not Tom's heroic actions that bring movie Sonic back. Yeah. It's Tom's words. And that's just such a great metaphor for how movie Sonic looks at the world. Only skin deep. He has to be told that Tom is his friend. It's not the level of devotion and sacrifice that Tom makes for movie Sonic. A man's so insecure that he needs to hear Tom say those words. Do I need a reason to want to help out a friend? It doesn't solidify their friendship either. Movie Sonic is coming from a place once again of insecurity and fear. And from that fear, instead of destroying Eggman, he sends Eggman off to the Mushroom Kingdom for Nintendo to solve his problems. Not cool, Sonic. Let's use Sonic Adventure as one last example of what Sonic needed to do. Yeah. At the end of the game, the Mighty Beast Chaos has all but destroyed Station Square. Things are looking dire, and it's up to Sonic and his friends, who are helping him out of their own accord, to save the day. To call one of Knuckles' ancestors and designated Doomsday Sayer wants to seal perfect chaos once again in this powerful rock called the Master Emerald. Sonic, however, thinks it's a horrible idea. Look, he's absorbed the Emerald's power. He must be sealed in the Master Emerald now! How can that help? It won't change how he feels inside, will it? His heart will still remain in turmoil, and his anger just won't vanish. He'll just be trapped forever! Chaos will at some point get out and cause more problems. Sonic simply can't let that happen. Otherwise, the cycle will repeat itself. Moreover, he knows he has the power to make a difference, to change things for the better. This Sonic isn't afraid of who he is, or his power. So, Super Sonic literally beats the negativity out of Perfect Chaos, and eventually Takal and Chaos can move on into the next dimension. I can't think of a better example of Game Sonic doing the right thing, and Movie Sonic doing the wrong thing. Movie Sonic's manipulation works on Tom, and the two end up back in Green Hill Zone. But now, Tom has to keep a bunch of stolen items and defaced public property in his attic. Cause Sonic lives with him now. What a great look for a man of the law. Movie Sonic is like Ariel from The Little Mermaid. He messes everything up and still gets what he wants at the end. Virtually, no consequences. Can I just say by the end of this thing, Movie Sonic is one of the biggest thieves I've ever seen. He's better than Nicolas Cage. It's like a tamed Guy Ritchie film. And sure, there are thieves with hearts of gold, but that's definitely not Movie Sonic. We have to look at the responsibility storytellers have. When writing a story, they have an impact over culture, shaping the way we think, how we look at others, and how we look at ourselves. Now, I'm not saying you can't have stories about flawed characters who don't learn their lessons, but the message we should get from that is what not to do. These people's lives aren't necessarily better for continually doing the wrong thing. You can still have entertaining stories that are funny and silly and end up with really good morals and messages by the end of it. So what clip are we using here? James and the Giant Peach. Spaceballs. What are we doing, Mel? 
and the characters don't need to be perfect. Dragon Ball is one of our favorite shows, and the hero, Goku, definitely doesn't do the right thing all the time. But what he does do is learn from his mistakes and changes for the better with each story arc. I like that vulnerability in the character. Sonic's the same way in a lot of his games and media. He does the best he can with what he's got. Being a leader sometimes means that you have to make these quick calls, and you know, may not always be the right decision or the best decision, but you know, you just gotta do what you can. But always, he remains true to himself and his ideals. It was never about chivalry for me. I just gotta do what I've gotta do. That's all. Afterwards, is like a 45 minute transformation scene. It's kind of long. Funny enough, Sonic and the Black Knight had one of the last really good stories and characterizations of Sonic. Around 2010, Sega hired some new writers and man oh man, not good. Are you crazy? What are we gonna do? Ugh, oh boy. Some would argue that this descent in quality is what led to the hero that is movie Sonic. <laughs> Entertainment is not just a source of escapism and shutting your brain off. We as humans have used storytelling since the beginning of time to teach moral lessons and responsibility. Junk food is good every once in a while. When you eat too much of it, it makes you sick. Oh. It's kind of what we gotten with most heroes nowadays. What we need to sustain ourselves are well-balanced meals that taste great and are good for us. If you eat well all the time, you don't really find the need for the junk food. And man, this movie is bad junk food. Let's take one last look at Tom. He's beaten down the whole movie and is taught to conform to what other people want. Even his wife at the end is questioning if this is really what Tom wants. Even though he saved a life and went on this adventure, he didn't get to do it based on his own terms and that's clearly a concern for Pretzel Lady. She knows how much Tom has sacrificed for their marriage and is supportive of whatever decision he makes. She just wants to make sure that that decision is what he truly wants. Looking back, she doubted him with the cakes and she doesn't want to do that again. Even Pretzel Lady, full of carbs and salt, has more of a character arc than Movie Sonic. This whole movie should just be called Wachowski the Hedgehog. Wachowski Adventure 2 Battle. Wachowski Unleashed, I'll stop. Given the state of the world and how lives have been taken and rearranged because of the pandemic, we need strong heroes and role models to help guide us to the other side. Things have not been easy. So I ask you this question. Which hero would you want guiding us? The Sonic we know yeah. or movie Sonic? Uh -huh. So the whole reason we decided to do this series of videos is to incite some discussion about the Sonic movie and what makes a good hero. Yes, whether you like the movie or not, our hope is that you enjoyed these videos and it brought you some new perspective. This is what we saw in the movie and we'd love to hear your opinion on all things Movie Sonic. Well, 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 what do we have here? A couple of scumbags hating on Movie Sonic. Oh no, it's Sasso Cop. There's only one place for radical Sonic soapboxers, such as yourself. That's right, you're going straight to the Sonic Slammer. Melvin, I can't go back to Sonic Jail. Yeah. What the heck is Sonic Jail? It's like jail, but fast! Get in there, you snake in the grass. No, no, Melvin! Melvin, please help! Me. Well, that was strange. Anyway. Hey there, Sassnicks, thanks for watching. Well, I figured I probably should do my job as the producer and give you guys some updates. We're gonna be doing a 3D animation to wrap up part two of the Last Dark Supersonic arc. And as we finish that, we're gonna get right back into Cowboy Sonic. Now we're gonna give you guys some more updates as that comes along, but we got all kinds of stuff coming your way. Sasso Studios tunes, Shadow the Pitchhog, 3D animations, Cowboy Sonic, you name it, we got it. So until next time, we'll see you guys soon.